Hey, what's up everyone? This is Dr. David Song at the Rehab Hero Clinic and today we'll be talking about quadriceps tendonitis. Now, uh, the quadriceps tendonitis or tendinopathy is a term used to describe issues experienced at the quad's tendon. Now, the difference between quadriceps tendinopathy and patellar tendinopathy is the location of uh, the, the tendinopathy or tendonitis. So, uh, with quadriceps tendinopathy, it will be above the kneecap because that's where the quadriceps tendon is. And with patellar tendinopathy, it'll be below the kneecap. Now, realistically speaking, the exercises you'll be doing for either issue is going to be, uh, for the most part, the same. So, for all intents and purposes, the patellar tendon and quadriceps tendon will be referring to both issues uh, by just calling it by either term. Now, I uh, like to use the word tendinopathy because tendonitis, as a term, is a bit antiquated. We now know that tendonitis actually lies on a spectrum of tendon disorders. Um, and that spectrum we refer to as tendinopathy. And that really, that pathy term is really to describe that there is a pathology in that tendon. Whereas tendonitis is a term that was originally used to describe inflammation of the tendon. But we now know that tendon injuries or pain in those areas can exist despite there being zero inflammation in that area. And this can sometimes be referred to as jumper's knee or runner's knee. Um, and these conditions may be related to another condition called the telefemoral pain syndrome. Now the differing factor between something like a tendinopathy versus the PFPS is that one is more kind of um, tissue damage in nature, the other one's more of a biomechanical loading issue. So, uh, tendon issue being it being a uh, pathology in the actual tendon, I will refer to that as a tendinopathy, whereas the patellofemoral pain syndrome um, is more of a mechanical load issue which has to do with like knee tracking, but it can still affect these two tendons, the quads and patella tendon. So really, um, the two different diagnoses tend to go hand in hand um, with when it comes to knee pain and knee issues. But you still want to get that checked out because the initial stages of what you're going to do may differ for each condition, although the late stage, even the mid-stage rehab might be the same, which is really trying to go over effective loading. Now, when it comes to doing exercises for the quads tendon, um, sensitivity and, and the tendon is to be expected when you're doing exercises. Generally speaking, the rule of thumb is that this pain should not exceed a 3 out of 10 pain according to your own pain tolerance. Um, as well as the pain should not persist, uh, the increase in pain ex experience in the exercise should not persist the next day or should not um, aggravate what you're originally experiencing following exercise. So if you find that these exercises or any exercises that you're doing for your knee does exacerbate your symptoms, does make them feel worse, it's just a signal saying that you pushed it a little too hard, maybe back off and take it a little bit easier the next time you try out these exercises. It doesn't necessarily mean that you cause more tissue damage, it just means you kind of trigger another inflammatory response or a sensitization of the tendon, um, which really doesn't mean that you cause more damage. But you want to be careful, of course, and also seek, uh, seek the guidance of a healthcare professional. Now, uh, this type of issue is really a chronic overload of your tendon. Now, people who usually go from zero activity to very active can sometimes experience issues in the quads or patella tendons because the tendon has been deconditioned for a long period of time and all of a sudden you're asking a lot out of it. Now the most uh, similar scenario I can think about is if you haven't been working out, all of a sudden you go into the gym and you bench press 200 pounds with zero lifting experience, you can expect something to go wrong. And similarly speaking, a lot of people don't realize that if you're the type of person to sit around all day and all of a sudden it becomes spring or summer and you want to go outside running again and you just start go run, you start running five times a week, you can't expect your knee to handle that just from the get-go. Now normally if you were to condition it slowly over time, obviously the goal is to be able to handle those types of stresses, those that type of work, but in the beginning you want to make sure you're at least following a program and loading up that tendon progressively. As some of you may know, the quadriceps is a muscle, is a muscle group of four muscles that uh, start at the upper thigh and go into the knee, uh, one of which also starts at uh, your pelvis actually. And so really, 
the function of these muscles is to extend the knee. So that's the exercises we're going to go over. We'll do that. So we're going to just change the room that we're in so that we have more space. Let's go there right now. All right, so we're going to go over three different exercises today. The first of which is going to be how to mobilize the soft tissues in there so that you can experience some symptom relief. The second of which is going to be a beginner exercise and the third of which is going to be a more advanced exercise for those of you who are in the later stages of healing. You can check out our exercise library at rehabhero.ca slash exercise if you want to see more videos on patella tendon health. Uh, all you gotta do is type in quadriceps or patellar tendon or uh, exercises for the quadriceps and you should find, be able to find on our database some of the exercises you can do. Now for the first one we're going to take a foam roller um, and this we're going to use this to mobilize the soft tissues. How you're going to start is you're going to lie down on that foam roller and you're going to kind of start at uh, a tender spot on your thigh. So I like to kind of have my elbows down on the floor, my other knee there on the side to support me. And I'm gonna place this on a tight spot on the quad. What I like to do first is to roll around until I find a nice tender spot. And once I kind of find it, uh, all you gotta do is sit around on it. Now, I'm not really a big fan of rolling around rapidly on the muscle because A, the muscle never learns how to relax under the deep pressure. Two, the pressure doesn't actually end up getting that deep and it stays rather uh, superficial because you're constantly moving around on it. Um, this can make the muscles spaz out actually, and I like to have my muscles nice and loose when I'm rolling them out. So from here, you can either sit on that spot for about 30 seconds or three to five deep breaths or breath cycles. Uh, alternatively, you could get more of an active release by slowly just bending that knee and then extending it back down. And I will do three to five repetitions of this per tender spot. Now, once you kind of work on that one spot, you'll just roll down until you find another tight spot and you'll just repeat this process again. And you can repeat this all the way until you reach downwards uh, into the knee. I always like to start at the front of the hip and work my way down rather than like start the knee and work your way up. But really, it's just a personal preference. There's no one way that is better than the other. The best way is the way you like. The second exercise we're going to do is going to require a dumbbell and a chair. So what we're going to do is a, a, a seated knee extension exercise. All you gotta do is from that chair, you're going to hold that weight in between your two feet and you're going to grip it together and hold the weight right in front of you in full knee extension. And then you could just lower that back down to the floor. You wanna hold the top of this movement for up to five to seven seconds, really focusing on squeezing those quadriceps muscles and then returning back to the floor. Now, the higher the chair, the better because you'll get more of a, a deeper range of motion during this exercise, but really it's about holding that peak contraction. The last exercise we're going to do is called reverse Nordic curl. Basically, you're going to start in this kneeling position and this one does have a bit of a learning curve to it because Really, it's A, how flexible you are and how strong your core is on top of how strong your quads are. So you're going to start in this Japanese sit position. From here, you're going to extend the hips up so you're in a tall kneel position. Um, keep your core nice and tight so that you don't hyperextend the back. Um, this will also help to maintain this hip angle. You want this hip angle to remain constant during the entirety of this exercise. From here, you have your hands out in front of you or on your chest, whatever you prefer for balance. And then you're going to go as far back as possible before returning back up. If you aren't an intermediate or advanced exerciser, you can start with a smaller range and then deepen it as you develop more conscious control and confidence in this movement. Okay, so that about wraps up everything I wanted to talk about, these three basic exercises that you can do to progress through your knee health and, and loading of your quadriceps and tendon. If you've got any questions, leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and check out our exercise library at rehabhero.ca slash exercise. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.